Death, the Time of Your Life is a sequel of Death, the High Cost of Living, which is once again written by Neil Gaiman with art by Chris Bacello and Mark Buckingham. This volume, as with the previous one, has death in it, but she's more of a supporting character this time. This book is really about documenting the love story between the characters of Hazel and Foxglove, who were minor characters in the Sandman mythos. Something tragic happens and one of the two makes a deal with death and now she's here to collect. Admittedly, I haven't read everything from the Sandman universe, but what I have and what has had Foxglove and Hazel in them, I did enjoy. So it's fun to read a story that was only about them. Since then, I have read them in the graphic novel I gave up for you, but they, that was more of an ensemble and they weren't the main focus. Also, I believe this story came out after Sandman ended, so this would be the final time that you would see these characters ever again. Back in the 1990s when I first read this, I didn't really know who Neil Gaiman was. I didn't read much of his work, and the only things I remember reading was his final Sandman arc, The Wake and The Tempest, The Books of Magic, and both Death miniseries. This was the first time I ever saw him write a love story. So it was impressive with the way he goes from writing two people in casual conversation discussing love, then life, sacrifices, and death with ease. Also, once again, Gaiman has hit the characterization of death right on the head. In the quick line, you learn something new about her. She loves everyone. She doesn't find anyone, even the most vile person, evil. She just sees them as hurt, sad, troubled, or lonely. I do wonder what she would have thought about the death cult at the beginning of Perludes and Nocturnes and <laughs> since they were trying to catch her instead of her brother and he was trapped for 70 years but oh well man what a different few years make comparing the art here to death the high cost of living is like night and day that death the high cost of living has a sketchy unfinished quality about it also the coloring seemed a bit different and odd in depth, the time of your life, the art seems more focused and the colors are cleaner and slicker. I think the reason it looks better is one, there's a different colors, and two, Chris Bacciello is further in, into his career. He has the same artistic style, but it's more streamlined and it seems more focused on what he can do well than what he can't do well. Well, nitpick-wise, in the previous volume, I had issue with pages and pages and pages of tiny panels. In this collection, there could also very well be at least 20 pages that each have between 12 to 16 panels. I never liked that. Comics are a visual medium. When you do this, it can screw up with the storytelling. I didn't find it to be that big an issue this time for a couple of reasons. One, the writing is that great. Yes, there are a lot of panels, but the characters are always saying something very interesting, so I gave it a pass. Two, there are times in this volume where Chris Bacciello will wrap an image or multiple images on the entire page detailing the experiences of a given character. So there is a trade-off. Yes, there will be pages suffering from congestion of panels, but there will also be times where the artist will be able to just cut loose and be imaginative. With all that being said, I do recommend this volume. It's great because it's, this isn't a big epic story. It's more intimate and it's really between really three or four main characters when you think about it. The best compliment you can give a work of art is by saying if someone who doesn't know anything about, about it or the source material is after experiencing it, not only will they understand it completely, but they enjoy it as well. And that's what we have here. And that's all I have right now. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>